Welcome back. I hope you had a good break. We are going to go ahead and start our new unit on waves. So today we're going to do a little introduction lesson. I'm going to walk you through this slide presentation and you have some notes to fill in. So let's go ahead and get started. So waves are basically a disturbance that transfers energy from one place to another. It's important to keep in mind that it's only transferring energy and it's not transferring any matter. It's only moving energy. So a few things we need to keep in mind are that the medium is the material through which a wave travels. This medium can be found in a solid, liquid, or gas form. Now mechanical waves are a type of wave that do require a medium to travel. An example of that would be a sound wave. However, there are also electromagnetic waves that can travel through empty space, such as light. Three examples of waves are light waves, sound waves, and seismic waves, and we'll talk a little bit more about each of those. So it's important to know that there are different types of waves. The first one is called a transverse wave. Transverse wave is a type of wave that moves the medium at a right angle to the direction in which the wave is traveling. So if you look down here, this is a transverse wave. This is a picture of what one looks like. And it goes up and down like this, but you can see that this is the direction that the wave is traveling in. And the wave is moving up and down at a right angle to the direction that it is traveling. Okay, so a longitudinal wave is a type of wave that displaces the particles of the medium parallel to the direction of which it's traveling. So in this picture, the energy is traveling in this direction and the particles in the wave are also traveling in this direction. Another way to look at this, it sort of looks like a, a slinky, but if you were to take it and look at the particles, what you're seeing is the particles are moving. So here's some particles and they're moving in the same direction. So here they're all bunched up, but as they move, they spread out a little bit and then they keep moving in this direction and they start to bunch up again. Okay, so this means the particles are moving the same direction that the median is moving. Now, a surface wave is a combination of both. So these particles are moving both up and down as they travel this way. Okay, so now, Let's talk about some specific things on the transverse wave. So the highest part of a transverse wave is called the crest. Now again, let's keep in mind that we have this middle line here. So the highest part it travels up is the crest and the lowest part that it travels down to is called the trough. Okay, so some examples of transverse waves are visible light, radio waves, and x-ray. All of those waves travel in this transverse type of wave, which is moving at a right angle to the direction that it's going. All right, now a longitudinal wave. Instead of having crests and troughs, it has what's called compression. That's where the particles are really close together. And then it has rarefaction. Refraction is when they start to spread out. So that's where the particles are furthest apart. So again, as a longitudinal wave is traveling, the particles are moving in the same direction as the medium. So first they're scrunching close together and then they're spreading out and close together and they're kind of inching their way along. So some examples of longitudinal waves are sound waves, ultrasound waves, and a slinky type of wave. If you have a slinky and you stretch it and pull it, you can see how it kind of compresses together and then spreads out and compresses together and spreads out as it moves from one end to the other end. Okay, surface waves are energy that travels along the surface of a medium. It occurs between two different media. So it travels slowly but can cause 
a lot of damage. Obviously, an ocean wave is a good example of a surface wave, ripples in water, and then also an earthquake, because all of these are happening along the top of a surface. Now, it says that it travels slowly, but can cause a severe damage. A great example of this is a tsunami. Now, in relation to life, the tsunami seems like it comes really fast. Like we all know it's hard to run away from a tsunami, but in relation to how waves travel, light and sound waves travel extremely fast compared to a surface wave. You can see it coming and while it's too fast for us to run away from in a tsunami, it is still relatively slow in relationship to um, the speed that other waves travel. But we all do know it can cause a lot of damage. Same with earthquake, right? It moves pretty slow, but as it's traveling, it causes a lot of damage. So here is a diagram of a wave. This is a transverse wave. We have already talked about the crest, the highest part that it has traveled, and the trough, which is the lowest part that it has traveled. This part is called the resting position. Anytime it gets here, it's a resting position. Okay, and this is the amplitude. And from two corresponding points, so here we have crest to crest, is the wavelength. Again, we could measure trough to trough. That's also going to be a wavelength. So let's go ahead and answer a few questions. So you're going to write the answer to each question in your notes. So go ahead and look over your notes, go through the five questions and answer the questions. If you have any questions for me or don't understand, please send me a message. All right, guys, please try to stay on top of your work. Let's not get too far behind. We only have three weeks until Thanksgiving. So try to make sure you're turning something in every day in science. Okay, guys, let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.